It's the most tremendous new musical experience you can have. All right, what's up, y'all? It's Slogan, and I'm here bringing y'all just a quick video. Um, this week, we're not going to be doing a special topic per se. I'm actually going to be covering a new rating system that I plan on using. Um, so, you know, the entire time my channel's been out, I've used a rating system of 0 to 10, going by 0.5 increments to explain how good an album is. Uh, and you can usually tell, I mean, based on the context with my review, where that album lies. Of course, there's variations such as like um, an 8 on a trap album is probably better um, or, or like different from an 8 on a uh, more introspective kind of um, like if I gave Kendrick Lamar an 8 and I gave Lil Uzi Vert an 8, it's more impressive that Uzi got an 8 because that's like, oh wow, you know, solid effort. Granted, I did give him an 8, but if I, I every Kendrick Lamar album I've ever heard is above an 8, so an 8 would be disappointing from him, you know what I'm saying? Um, I try to judge him fairly to where, you know, an 8 and an 8 in two different albums, two different types of albums are still equivalent, but there's more disappointment that goes into an 8 from a level artists like Kendrick compared to something else. So I want to give a little bit more context to that. Um, I will be still giving numeric ratings along with these, but I will use these um, moniker ratings to give more context to the numeric ratings. That way, if you're someone who doesn't want to listen to the review and you skip to the end, you'll get the context, but I pray that you don't do that because then you're still missing out on a lot of the stuff. A lot of the times I'll mention songs that are more worth keeping or less worth keeping so of course i still recommend watching the whole video uh but that being said let's go ahead and get into breaking down this system i will start at the top at the bottom and move to the top uh so first we're going to start with the very worst rating i can give um and i don't see giving i don't see giving either the bottom rating or the top rating very often but still they have to be in there so first is trash Trash is whenever pretty much every single song is horrible or bad, outside of maybe one or two. Um, I can't think of really an album that I would give this rating other than maybe the NBA Youngboy album, uh, 38 Baby 2. Um, that's really the only one that I can think of that I would give to that to this year. Uh, but the general numeric rating for a trash album would be 0 to 3. Um, there could be an album that gets that rating that still isn't trash if it has a little bit more worth keeping. Um, and I'll explain that as I go along to my next rating. So that's just where I see the bottom being a 0 to a 3. Um, and then it having like absolutely no redeeming qualities. That would be considered trash. Uh, forgettable is the next one. Forgettable is kind of in that range where it's still pretty bad. There's a lot of bad tracks, but none of them are so bad that it ends up in that trash category to where it's like, okay, that was bad, but I'm not going to remember it for being bad. Like, trash is whenever it's memorable and you will bring it up and talk trash about it in circles, whereas forgettable is like, okay, I'm... I'm never going to talk about that one again because I just, I'm not going to remember it in a week. Like, I'm going to forget it even came out. Um, so, that's kind of in that two to six range. It could even, like, two being obviously the worst end of that where it's like, okay, that was bad, but it's not memorable um, compared to six being like, okay, that was actually a decent album, but I'm still not going to go back to it ever again. It's just like, okay, it came out. Big deal. It's not... It's not worth trashing, but it's not worth keeping either, you know. So that kind of fits into that range. I, li I like how that one has a bigger range compared to some of these other um, ratings so that it can encapsulate more stuff. And that way, it, it is more context to that. Um, next comes Skip City. Now, Skip City, I see the range being like a 3 to a 6. Uh, Skip City is where more than basically more than half of the track listing is skips. Um, somewhere in that range to where it, ha it has more than five or six skips, basically. Uh, songs that you just won't go back to. Um, this is for those albums where you might listen to it and be like, okay, I enjoyed 
three or four songs, but then the rest of them are just bad. Um, and it could be a bad album, it could be a decent album. I'm not going to go so far as to say it could be a good album, because I have another rating coming up next that could work better for good albums. But, um, Skip City is kind of like, you know, my feelings on, um, A Love Letter to You 4 by Trippy Red. I found like four or five keepers on that project that I really like. But it's like 18 songs long. So that is Skip City all over the place. There are a couple other songs that were decent, but I don't go back to ever. And then there were a couple songs that were just bad. Uh, I think I gave that one actually a 4 or 4.5. Um, but my rating range for this one is like a 3 to a 6. You know, kind of in that range where it's like, okay, it's not really bad, but it's not great either. But it might have a couple of songs to where it's not forgettable at the same time. Like, I'm going to remember these songs and be like, oh yeah, I remember listening to that project just because of these songs. Um, so there's where that one falls. And after that comes Good If It Were Shorter. Um, with Good If It Were Shorter, this kind of... I've been talking about these albums forever. Uh, and this is another big range. Um, this is those albums that I put on my Spotify and cut off a couple of tracks and make them into a better album. Such as Views, uh, Music To Be Murdered By, uh, even The Carter Five, which is on the upper end of those albums. That's why this has another big range you know I, I find this one in that four to eight range to where a four being like the lower end but it has to be a certain rating to where it's like okay i'd actually be willing to put in the time to make this into a better album if it's much below a four i'm just like okay it's not even worth saving there's probably only five to six songs that i could save compared to like uh with music to be murdered by i think i came up with nine songs out of 20 to save and some of those were skits as well so um those being skips don't even count. Uh, with like and with the Carter Five, I really only cut it down from an hour twenty five minutes, I think, or an hour thirty minutes to like an hour exactly. So I mean that's still a pretty decent length album. Um, but like I said, it could be anywhere from a four to an eight. Where like views, um, or no, let's, let's go with music to be murdered by. I see that as the best example. I gave that a five as is, but the way I cut it down from an hour long to thirty minutes long. It rose from a 5 to like an 8. I think the, the version that I have is an 8. Um, so I like that rating. I, I, I think that that one's a good one to use because there are a lot of albums that come out that are just too long. Um, now after that comes Ride and Vibe, which will be probably the easiest, one of the easiest to break down. That's just one of those albums where, you know, it might not be extremely memorable or anything, but you're going to keep it because it has a couple of bangers, or if not, every single song is a, is a song where you can just roll the windows down, ride, and enjoy yourself. Um, this could be for albums like, I don't know, Anderson Pock albums, although generally speaking, those are good enough that they're going to be in a better category, um, such as ones that I will mention later. Um, but more specifically, I think the best example of this one is like that, uh, Don Tolliver album that came out this year. Uh, just nothing special about it. Just a lot of songs that you can really enjoy, um, and ride with, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Lil Uzi, I could see him falling into this category. A lot of trap artists honestly could fit into this where they make songs that like, where they make albums that like don't stand out enough to be considered like album of the year contenders, but they're still really good and enjoyable. Um, maybe not extremely memorable, but the vibes that they put you in are worth keeping. Um, so this range I could see going anywhere from 3.5 to 8. 3.5 being more where you only find a couple of tracks or like every single song is enjoyable, but it's like it's not actually a good project. Um, I see that being like the Jack, Jack Boys project, which was actually pretty bad. Um, but it's so short that you can't call it Skip City. It's not forgettable because it's Don Tolliver and Travis Scott. It's not trash. It's not that bad. So, Ride and Vibe. A bad Ride and Vibe is where I would put that. Don Tolliver obviously being a better Ride and Vibe. You know, his Heaven or Hell um, project this year. Um, again, 3.5 to 8 in that range. That, that's a huge range. I, I really like that category. Um, after that, I have just the solid category. That's like your 6 to 8.5 where they're good albums. They're probably ones you're going to end up keeping. They're ones you'll probably go back to every once in a while, but they're not ones that you're like, oh, I'm going to listen to this on repeat. I'm going to go back to this every week. You know, I'm going to remember this one at the end of the year as one that really stood out. Um, some of them, the upper end of this category will be the ones where it's like, okay, that was really good. That one really stuck with me, but it's not an album of the year contender, you know? Um, 
this is like in that six to eight point five range. I think I already said that, but this is this is for those where it's like, okay, that's pretty good. That's sticking with me. Um, an example of this one, I guess I would have to give it to like Heathen by Galvi. Um, you know, I loved that album. I believe I gave it an eight or eight point five. Um, so it's at the upper end. At that that's one that I would love to put into the album of the year contender, uh, just because of how much I personally enjoy it. But I know that comes on my personal enjoyment. Um, realistically speaking, it's probably not an album of the year contender. And then also, I know there's, I already know there's plenty, like, I, I know it's not even in my top five. Uh, it, it, I think it's at the lower end of my top 10, if I'm totally honest, still in there, but just not, not up there to where I could say, oh yeah, it has a chance of actually getting album of the year. I can't go that far. Um, along with that, I could probably throw like Denzel Curry's, um, Unlocked project in here yeah that's definitely not an album of the year contender but it's just a really good project that is short to the point and very enjoyable so stuff like that um now after that we get into the really good ratings the next one being album of the year contender which i see being an eight and up more likely an 8.5 and up but i could see some eights being album of the year contenders if they just really stick with me and then they get talked about a lot to where maybe it resonates with more people with other people more than it does me but to where i can still say i see why other people enjoy it uh but this is usually just say for the albums like um pray for paris um i would have given this to futures high off life definitely would have given this to after hours um you know this is just those projects where it's like oh that is really good um i'm gonna remember this project a lot and i could see it being the best album of the year or at the very least in my top 10 um unless it's a really good year and we have more than 10 album of the year contenders, which I don't see happening very often. It's not the nineties anymore. So music isn't coming out like that anymore. There aren't that many albums that just stick with you, unfortunately, anymore discussion for another day either way. But these are ones that are like, Oh wow, they're amazing, but they're not like instant classics maybe because I do have one more rating being a potential classic. Uh, now potential classic is probably going to be the least given rating this and trash. You know, I don't like giving, them ratings that much because you have to be either really bad or really freaking good uh so potential classic is saved for those that are like in that nine up range but just because you get a nine does not mean you're a potential classic i can tell you right now pray for paris is not a potential classic it just does not have the staying power the last album i can think of that i would have given this to probably would have been igor uh just because it was very unique yes it was a 9.5 out of 10 and, I mean, it does have the potential to be a classic. You know, we had the discussion last week, what is a classic? How long do you have to wait for it to be a classic? So, obviously, I'm not saying if I give this rating, it's going to go down as a classic. You know, usually you have to wait five years for that outside of the anomalies of, like, um, To Pimp a Butterfly. You know, that album was just so good that, yes, you knew after a month it was probably going to be considered a classic. And, yes, by this point, it is definitely definitely considered a classic there's no doubt about that um but potential classic again is for those where i see like okay they're really good like definitely album of the year contenders probably going to be the ones that win it and on top of that have the staying power have the popularity they have to be big enough too you know they they can't be put out by an underground artist that only a thousand people actually listen to the album they need to be ones that a lot that generally speaking quite a few people do hear um more on that popular end um, and that doesn't just mean that I'm saving it for the mainstream. No, like it could be the album that blows up an, a smaller artist at the same time. Um, regardless, they do need to be ones that are generally more heard. Um, I, I'll take that into consideration. And yeah, they need to have that staying power. So again, nine and up for that. And that'll probably be the most rare rating that I give out. I only see giving one of one to two of those every two to three years. Like it's not like classics drop every week, guys. Um, so yeah, that being said, that is going to be my new rating system. I am very excited to start using this again. I'll continue with the numeric ratings as well. Uh, just, to, but this is just more so to help give context to those along with the reviews that I'm, li I'm leaving ahead of all of this. So make sure you check out my videos coming up. This is going to be a lot of fun. I appreciate y'all watching this and sticking through this. Make sure to hit the like button, comment, and sub. Hit the bell next to my name for notifications. And make sure to share this video so that everyone can check it out and see what my new rating system will be coming up. I appreciate y'all watching and I will hit y'all up next time.